different people cope in difficult times in different ways. We all have ways of coping, and to some extent, the coping strategies that we use in dealing with negative events predicts how those events will impact on our mental health. Psychologists have found that certain coping strategies seem to work better than others. An example of a coping strategy that does not work is avoidance, when we try and push something away. Research has shown that there is a very low well-being sense when avoidance is used as a coping mechanism. In 2018, a group of psychologists in Spain studied three coping strategies that seem to all work well. These strategies were very simple. The first one is positive reappraisal, re-evaluating stressful events to see them in a more positive light. We think back and we re-evaluate them. Number two, we seek support, seeking out support from others in times of stress, that we have support groups or people who can help us. And number three, we plan, planning ahead to solve problems and find ways of dealing with stressful situations, that we don't just find ourselves in it, we've given it some thought. The psychologist looked at how a group of over a thousand university students used or did not use these coping strategies. And what they found was that these strategies appear to complement each other. Specifically, students who used all three of these strategies had higher levels of well-being. This finding led the researchers to conclude that in understanding how coping strategies work, it's important to take into account people's ability to combine different approach coping strategies. The idea that being able to mix and match coping strategies is a useful coping strategy in itself. This is referred to as coping flexibility. No single coping strategy is going to be equally effective in all situations. And being able to choose effective coping strategies from a broad repertoire and to discard coping strategies that aren't working has obvious advantages. Students who scored higher on coping flexibility had fewer symptoms of depression and anxiety. They also had lower levels of overall distress. That is fascinating. So the takeaway is simply this. Develop multiple coping skills that may have, in, that may have positive implications for your mental health, especially when combined with the ability to use those coping skills effectively by adapting to different situations. And if you're looking for a place to start, why not start with positive reappraisal, support seeking, and planning ahead to solve your problems? Because we always know when a problem might be on the road ahead of us. And so friends, that brings us to the end of this series, Accompany. We want to thank you for all your support and your feedback over the last eight or nine weeks. It has been good to connect with you in this way. And we will continue to minister in our ever-changing environment in ever-changing ways in the weeks and the months that lie ahead. So keep up to date with us and remember to look for the new things that we're going to offer by simply visiting regularly our website jesuitinstitute.org.za